to wait to see if the politicians will let ExoMars fly. But we've got TGO safely in orbit around Mars, and so it's still an exciting time at the Red Planet. That's it for this programme, but do check out the Star Guide on the website. We'll be back next month with an update of the biggest stories of the year. In the meantime, get outside and get looking up. Good night. As film director Ken Loach's work continues to inspire debate, a chance to see the groundbreaking 1966 drama that shocked the nation. Kathy, come home next on BBC Four. Silent Nights, Swedish thriller Modus, starts Saturday 26th of November on BBC4. Fifty years on from a TV event watched by millions that brought the scandal of homelessness into the nation's living rooms. Ken Loach's landmark drama on BBC4, Kathy, Come Home. Well, I was a bit fed up, you know. There didn't seem to be much there for me. You know how these little towns are. One coffee bar. It was closed on a Sunday. Didn't even tell them I was going. I sent them a card when I got down there. That house over there. Yeah, that one with the broken steps. That's where I went for a room. And the fella kept touching me. Where did I get a room in the end? Oh, yeah, down there. Mantua Street, three pounds a week. That's where I got my first job. Petrol pump girl, mad. They were going along in these hearses, you see, to what they call this unusual supper party. Mm -hmm. And the bloke who was going in ahead of them, the chandelier falls down on him, you see, and he gets strangled with all these diamonds. And then this big woman, who grinded mm -hmm. about 40 foot high. Oh, that was through the radioactive dust, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. Well, she sticks around down through this window, you see, and she gets hold of this mean little piece <laughs> that he's been doing it with, and they've been jitterbugging away. Oh, it was an old film? Oh, yes, quite old. But unbeknownst to this, uh, this big 40-foot girl, you see, there's been a bit of swapping around. And it's not her husband at all. Anymore. Anyway, as a bloke's jumping up, his mask slips. He, he slips right down. <laughs> Who do you think it was? Duke of Edinburgh. If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall or the mountain should crumble to the sea I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand, stand by me. And darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand by me, walk oh, stand now, stand by me. We'll have a motor, an E-type, eh? Well, help me down, then. How about an E-type, eh, Gaff? An E-type? Yeah. Fresh air expensive. Ah, we'll have an E-type. I mean, why not? The money I'm earning. Then what do you think we'll do, eh? I don't know. 
Shunt it, I suppose. No, shunt it. What are you talking about? I'm an A1 driver, I am. No. We'll uh, take the brakes out. That's what we'll do. We'll take the brakes out. Take the brakes out? Yeah, this bloke, he was telling me, you know, he's a, a fitter down at the Lotus. He says, you just don't need brakes. You don't need them. Drive it on the gears. Gears will stop you. I mean, brakes, brakes, they spoil a good driver, they spoil a good engine. And if you haven't got brakes, you're just not tempted to use them, are you? Well, I feel as if I've got a few drinks inside me. You know, when you, you've had two or three drinks, you don't, don't see nobody, you don't twist it out. What, you mean you're a bit drunk? No, just, just don't, don't notice anybody else when I'm out with you, that's all, okay? Nice. How do you feel? Oh, come on, I told you. Oh, no. Well, you can tell me. I'm feeling embarrassed. It's only me here, yeah. and that old fellow's asleep. <laughs> I think that's a horrible thing. No, to say. just go and have a drink. I never knew you were small. Well, it's not swearing. It was. We just came well, up. Well, nice boys all. don't say things like that. Well, it was. I was upset. Get your hand off of me. I was just upset, that's all. I think I'm going home. No, don't be silly. Let's go and have a drink. I put my best suit on to come wow. out with you tonight. I'm sorry, I can't help it. The least you could have done was. Well, do you love me? Ah, it's the advantage working for a small firm like this. Just ain't particularly, you know. I mean, don't worry about the hours or what do you. Get your stamps or flock yourself to death or take it easy. They just don't care. It's the same about lifts, you know. I mean, if you give a bird a lift, they just ain't particular. I'll nice ditch you a pair this week. It's the same with birds. Just don't care, you know. Oh, so it's not the first time you've given a lift to a bird, then? Uh, don't be silly. Hey, what's this little place? It's the firm I work for. Is it safe? Of course it is. I bet you brought other birds up here. Look, you can see a bit already. You can see half the tower from here, nearly. No, Raj, I don't like it. It's shaking. Oh, come on. You no, get your sea legs. Come on. No, I'm not coming. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Uh oh! <laughs> Trust you. Come on, up again. Careful. Come on. There. Trust you to bring me up to a rotten old place like this. Now, how are we going to get down? Don't worry. Live in the present, eh, Kath? It's rotten, isn't it? This old place is going to come down soon. I was scared, Reg. Ah, don't be silly. No, I was, really. I haven't got much courage. I reckon it's just us now, isn't it? Just us. Just you and me, eh? I wouldn't mind. Have some babies, Kath. I'd like that, Reg. So to all the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Along comes this uh, sanitary man, what they call the health dude, I you see. You're right, darling. You don't look at all well. Anyway, she's terrible. And he perceives, you see, that these beetles are nesting in this clapped out tree at the back of May's cat. Yeah, so he sprays all this disinfectant into the tree. Some of it gets into May's dinner and kills two of the customers off. Some of them got to eat, don't they? What about coming to the end of love? How does that one go? Calm. To the end end of love. I wrote that and all. Never got no credit for that neither. Well, when you lived in the country, did you like living there? Oh, no. There was nothing there for me. Now, what's the matter? Here, young lady. Come on, come on. 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 And a slight history of incontinence. Oh, yes, there's that. Rambling in his mind at all. Funny, difficult to remember the odd little thing. A little, aren't you, Granddad? I don't know. I've never no, been... no, thank you. And has to be helped with dressing. Yes, well, I, I certainly think you've got a case for having your father taken into care. Well, what do you feel about it, Grandad? Well, if you ask me, I'm not in Besides, agreement Besides, there's it. the fact that we need the space. There's the two boys, see, they're coming back out of the army, so we can't keep him. And the council say it's overcrowding. Yes, yes, of course. And the incontinence is getting pretty bad. Well, Grandad, you'll be in one of our larger homes. Rivermead, I expect you've noticed it up at Town Hall. It's, um, it's especially suitable for you because they have all kinds of facilities on offer that you mightn't get in a smaller place. And uh, as well as that, there's always plenty to do. You'll find there's plenty to keep the time passing, what with dances and, and hobby clubs of various kinds. And there is help available for the things that might be getting a little complicated, like dressing and attention to your feet. Come here. Kathy. Come on, Kathy. No, Kathy. 
Keeps all the sounds of the traffic out, you see. And it keeps heating as well. Oh. You know, I was thinking. Hmm? You know that table we saw in the shop the other day? Yeah. Don't you think it'd look good over there? Yeah. And I could get one of those rubber plants to put on it, couldn't I? Oh, yeah. Cat, Fab, what do you think we ought to have the telly? The telly? I don't know, really. Yeah, I reckon that's a nice little picture, that calf. Do you think we're overstepping it a bit, taking on this place? Oh, I don't know. It's a bit late now we got it, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, there's no point taking on a posh place if we can't really afford it, is there? Of course we can. I mean, well, I'm earning £25 a week, and then there's you. What is it? Uh, £6 a week plus three in tips. Hmm. Well, it's £34, £35 a week. Bloody millionaires, aren't we? You work £35 a week? Funny. A place like that even smells different. Must be the central eating. Felt different, too, in your bones. Oh, what a place. Parquet flooring. Tin openers fixed to the wall, double glazing, and the neighbours talk about stylish. All right. Now, we're going to try something which is, sounds a little complicated, but isn't really. Now, can you put your arms at the side of you, just down by the side of your body, completely relaxed? Now, when you contract a leg, your toe turns up. You make a sort of square. Heel. It came as quite a surprise when I found out. And let it down. I was sick all the time and it never occurred to me why. And contract. So the doctor, he said, can it be that you're pregnant? And let it And down. then I realised. Now the other leg. I got to dream then about what it would be like. Now this is a diagram to show what's happening right at the beginning before labour really starts. And you can see that the baby is surrounded by fluid and it's quite intact, hasn't broken at all. And this is the neck of the uterus here, or the cervix, as we call it. Me and my husband are looking for a house to buy. I wondered if you could help us. Well, we have a number of properties in the lower price ranges. It's uh, 3,500 to 5,000 pounds, if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. Mm. Yeah. On which we could probably arrange a 90% mortgage, other things being equal. May I ask uh, how big your deposit would be? Well, well, I'm off work now, so we haven't got quite so much at the moment. But I reckon we could manage about, oh, about 100 pounds. A hundred pounds would barely cover the legal costs involved. You might be lucky and find a new flat with a deposit of only 400, but uh, <laughs> you'll be very lucky. I mean, we do have cheaper houses, but uh, they're in such a bad condition that a building society would normally require you to spend about 700 pounds on improvements. And they'd withhold a proportion of the loan until the work was complete. So you see, really, the cheapest houses are bought by the people with the money in hand to improve them. So really, it was a waste of my time coming here. Well, I need compensation. But I told you about that camshaft knocking through, didn't Rich, I? Look, I would compensate you, but skin. I ain't had no insurance on me, lorry. You're man. making a bomb here. Yeah? I just want I don't a little want bit any of any argument about it. But it's not argument. I've had an accident and I'm injured and I want some compensation. But it's not up to me. Lorry's gone. I've got nothing to compensate you with. How well off do you think we'll be? Well, it's not so good, Kath. Won't have so much now. Never mind. No, Reg will fix it. Look, Reg. How much will we have? Well, you're not earning no more. And I'm down to sickness benefit. How much is that, do you know? No, but it's not very much. How much have we got on the HP, Anne? Nearly five pounds a week. Five? What, is ten on the flat? Nothing else? No. Oh, there's the life insurance as well. Oh, yeah. Still, we've got savings, haven't we? Yeah, 30 pounds. I suppose we'd better find somewhere cheaper to live, then. I suppose so. Oh, it doesn't matter anyway. We'd have had to get out of here. They don't allow children. Westminster. How about sharing? You fancy sharing? Sharing with who? I don't know. Oh, no. Get some nice young couple to share with us. Took me a long time to get used to sharing with you, didn't it? Really? Oh, thank you. There's 200,000 more families in the London area than the homes to put them. 
And in addition, there's 60,000 single persons living without sinks or stoves. In seven central London boroughs, at least one in ten of all households is overcrowded. That is to say, living more than one and a half people per room. Oh, hello. Is your room still to let? No, is it still in that place? Yes, it is. Well, uh, you know, it will be a week tomorrow since I've gone up to take it out because I got Pardon? some... A week, it will be a week. Really? On the Thursday of last week, I asked them to take it out because I've got suited. Well, a few years back, figures released by the LCC revealed that families of certain sizes, at the rate of building in force, would be 350 years on the housing list before they were offered a house. Oh, it's a scourge here. The present target of 500,000 set by the governments is not high enough. Even if it is reached, there's still people living in slums 10 years from now. What's needed is a government that realises that this is a crisis and treats it as such. We can't stay at Mums, there's no room. The council said it was overcrowded. Yeah, but they need to find out, need they? Oh, Mum will fix it, don't worry. You're going to have better eyes than your dad, aren't you? Hey? Yeah, hey. you squinted a bit, then. They all squint. Oh. Funny how a baby makes a place quite different. And Reggie said so too. Well, goodbye to freedom. I didn't mind though. This is what you call the island of paradise. The kids here, they've seen bats running around the place nearly as big as cats. In any time the children have accidents, nine out of ten times all the mothers come down to see if they can do anything to help you. They're so old, the damned old places, they're so old, they want pulling down. We've got plenty of company and I think we're reasonable people that we all get on together. Uh, we have our ups and downs, you can fight over the kids, but um, apart from that, we're lucky I suppose, better off than some people. I don't like one half of the people in it. And what is more, there's none of them neighbourly. They've always got something to say about you, behind your back. I had a friend live next door to me. She really would have given a thousand pounds, as she used to say, to move out of here. But now she's gone. She's got a brand new masonette. She said she'd still like to come back if she could bring her flat back here. She likes the company and the friends. Of course, Reggie's uncle Mac, he was the adventurer stuff. He spent a lot of time in India. He wanted to see foreign parts. He never had it. Then his uncle Tom, he was in the Merchant Navy. Uncle Jim, well, he was the mayor do well. When he got married, I remember Granddad saying, of oh, course, he's a last fellow, but he'll never be no good to no woman, not never. When I first came here, we never had none of this lot. We never had no children in here. This was only for a married couple or one on their own. No children. You had ladies here then. There was rats under the floorboard and I had the council down to take the floorboards all up and put all poison down for the rat. And they said that definitely rats have been there, but they've probably gone somewhere else to annoy somebody else, like. Hey, Rat, you've got a new girl at work. You knew her when you went to school. Wait, who's that? Uh, Christine something or other, Rowbottom or something. That's oh, right. Oh, I know. Uh, Jenkins, wasn't it? That's it. She's on the bra counter. <laughs> well, she'll get your pair, I'll tell it. <laughs> <laughs> what up? Um, wasn't it, um, George? You remember George? What, George had an accident? Did he have an accident? What was that? Didn't you know? He had a zigger. Oh, dear. Well, that's true. Yeah, wasn't it? He was very keen on sports, too, I remember. Mm. He was a lovely little runner. He really was. And he won't be able to run anymore, will he? Well, I think it's funny, you yeah. <laughs> um, I think this is the only tenement block in Islington where you can sit in your toilet with your door open and cook your breakfast at the same time. We've only got one bedroom. I mean, you've got no married life. It's sort of, um, half your questions and half your airs is over sex. Because you have to think that they you know, and of course you're always on nerves with the children. I don't think it's fair to a, a man, or if you're married and that, and if you've got children, I think you're entitled to have another room. You can look out your door at the other woman's passage. We can't do that in any new flats, can you? I gave Bridget some of those frozen chips last week. 
You didn't like them very much. Those chips. Mm. You know what I think about them things? You know what Mr Ward used to say? The most unhealthy. We'll go and make one another cup of tea. We sit outside the doors and have a laugh and that. Better to keep yourself to yourself. Then you can't get into no row. Cook your dinner now, dear. And then I'll cook ours for Arlene and the boys. No, Mum, I'm just going to put the baby to bed. He's asleep. You know it don't work when we all have it together. Clear up after him this time. I do think it's a bit hard the council won't do nothing for you. I mean, I've done my bit. I've brought up five children. But then again, if we all pick where we live, none of us would live here, would we? Stop your fella putting his feet all over the furniture and picking up the baby with his filthy hands. He's your son. But you taught him dirty habits. Dirty habits? You don't wash your hands before you touch the baby or his bottle. Well, I was only doing it to help. And don't put Daz in his bottle either. And then there's the toilet. What about the sodding toilet? You know what I mean about the toilet. I think it's disgusting. Well, I've already seen the sorriest things to bring that up. got on my boy's nerves with worry so that he ran off the road. It's about time you was going. All right, I've got to go. Keep your rotten old flat. I can't stand it anyway. It's driving me round the bloody bend. Say, so see you after dinner. You're not going to spend me, are you? We moved right away from the parts we've been living in. And Reg found quite sure. a good job, too. Come on. And we soon fitted in. Then Stevie came along. And we got quite settled, really. These streets, they looked rough, and there were rats. But life was quite good here. Some of the places were boarded up with the upstairs windows empty. Others were crammed full with people and kiddies. Once I heard sounds coming from one of the boarded up houses. It sounded like what? Like a baby crying. I went to a house the other week. When we come out, it's not too good, I tell you. And uh, she come out in a naked dress. Well, that's the sort of people I met. The women used to scrub the pavements every morning to keep them clean. Mrs. De came to see me last week from Yardley. And when she seen the street, she said, my God, Violet, she said, whatever possessed you to live in a street like this. So you knew everybody and everybody was friendly like, you know what I mean? But, I mean, you don't know anybody now and, uh, I mean, they're different class altogether what they was like. You made friends, you know, yeah? And they're very, very nice friends. We can have a laugh and a joke. They might have me funny ways, but I'm a kind-hearted old bit of sugar. I'm harmless. I'm just an old bag as he's got nobody to turn to. <laughs> what have happened to Mr Alley, then? Things have gone too far enough with these here closets. There's too much pressure, too many people. Yeah. The plaster keeps coming off the wall. Well, the plaster, I've noticed that. Oh, you'll go and pull the chain and half the ceiling comes down on top no. on you. It's a blooming old system. Once a new one in there, the size of will kill waiting. I've seen all sorts of changes, from better to worse. Everybody had window boxes when I first got here. Now, my dear, once I had a profession, can you guess what it was? Mm, I don't know. I was a newer, dear. Oh, you weren't, Mrs. Alley. I don't believe you. I knew her. <laughs> Long time ago, but I was lovely then. Had the fellas wild for me, I did. Did you? And I was Oh, I've got something I want you to do for me. Will you read this letter for me, dear? Yeah. It's one of my old favourites. And my eyes are not so good these days. Oh, Mrs. Alley, it's all about sex. Where's you getting me to read your sexy letters for you? Well, there's a cafe down the road and they have a strip tease. And every night there's kids hanging round down there waiting to get in and see them. Well, that's putting ideas in the kids' heads, isn't it? Stephen, what are you doing? That dirt. I told you not to play with the dirt. Look at your clean jeans. Now put that down. And you, Sean. Look at you. You're filthy. Now, come on. Enjoy. Now I was pregnant again. Some would say it was wrong to have another kitty when you're overcrowded as it is. But I don't think so. I think kiddies are God's gift. You don't do right to deprive anyone of the chance of life. Love's what's important in a child's life. Love is more important to a child than nice surroundings. I know, because I lived in what they call a respectable home. 
And I didn't have it. The attic, you know, we have to sleep in the attic like and it's quite damp. He wallpapered it uh, about three weeks before I had the baby. And uh, the far wall is starting to come down already. Help! Oh, Mrs. Alley, are you oh, all right? Oh, there's a bed. Oh, oh thank you, Ducks. Come on. Thank oh. you. I'm very glad to hear you, Ducks. I'm very oh, Mrs. Alley, really I can't I pull any harder on them. I'll do it. I'll do it, silly girl. Pull me. Uh, uh, the bed, see? Uh, oh, it's the bed, and the springs get rotted. You may see one of these pigeons flying across, you see, because I've got one coming from Barcelona, and he's very tired. There's a pigeon there. Come on. I'll send that cat up after you. Now, come in. Come on. Come on. I felt we were honoured somehow. That pigeon coming all the way back to us. Mrs. Alley, can I have a word with you for a minute? Give me a lift up, dear. Oh, thank you. Can you manage? Thank you. Mrs. Alley, I was wondering if it'd be all right if we owed the rent for a few weeks. And you see, what with the pigeons, and Reg isn't earning very much now. Owe the rent, Doc? Mm. Of course you can hold them in, but I want to be paid. Oh, we'll pay you. Oh, I want, I'll have to be paid. You see, as old as I seem, I don't qualify for a pension. Oh. I look older than I really am. The children try to have a good time as people who mind their own business and let them have it. Oh, wait. One's name was Sean, the other one's was Stephen. And they lived in a little cottage by the seaside. And every day... Did they? Yeah. Reg! Reg! It's Mrs. Alley! She's dead! The men from the council came along, took away her odd bits and pieces. They looked through the letters for notes of any relatives she might have, but she hadn't got none. Only letters from her old clients, that's all. So there was no one to pay the death grant to. Yes? I'm representing a nephew of the deceased, Mrs. Alley, what died last week. And the fact is that my client now needs the unpaid rent for the current week and the back period, during which he gathers from the rent book that you was in arrears. In arrears? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Well, I didn't know Mrs. Alley had any relatives. Well, she does. Well, I'm sorry, but I can't oblige you at the moment. You see, Mrs. Alley said we could owe the rent for a few weeks because my reg has been ill. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, now he's better, we'll pay you. Of course we will. Yeah. But just give us a few weeks, that's all. And I mean, I'll even go out to work as well. What Mrs. Alley said and what my client wants are completely different. So you better find some way to pay off, OK? You couldn't talk to him. It was like it was hopeless trying to talk to him. What, three months in arrears? Well, I knock his block in. I mean, who do you think he's talking to? How long has he says he's been round there? Well, it's four weeks. Well, four weeks? He says here we are in three months. I mean, well, who are we supposed to pay this rent to? I mean, he never comes round. I mean, how do you expect to collect it? Well, have another look at the letter. What well, he says here, he's going to kick us out. Well, they can't evict you these days. I saw they passed a law about it. Nonsense. Well, he says here he can. Hey, look, I told you once we'll pay you, if only you'll give us time. I know your game. You want to get us out so you can charge someone else key money. My client needs this place for himself and his relatives, so you better get out. You may have heard that eviction is illegal these days, but in the case of a relative, what wants an house, you can still be evicted. Are you sure about that? And we'll get a court order to prove it. But we're protected I've tenants. I've been here every week now for a month. You've had time to pay off. The defendant not only persistently refused to pay his rent, but in addition to this, the landlord will be forced to put the premises right at the cost of some several hundred pounds to himself. What have you got to say? Well, I say it's all a pack of lies. I mean, listen, now for the first thing, now, Mrs. Alley said that we didn't have to pay any rent because I wasn't working, you see? And then this bloke comes round and says he wants the rent. Well, when I goes round to him with the rent, he won't accept it. I'm not satisfied in this case that the defendant is telling the truth. In addition, he appears to have mislaid the rent book given to him by Mrs. Alley. I take the case as proved. We'll grant an eviction order dated four weeks from now. So we tried. We wrote letters, wrote after places. Never got no answer. 
And the next answer we got was no children. No children accepted. And I went to an agent, and he turned around and said, yes, they'd guarantee it to find us a place, providing we gave them 20% of a year's rent and 10% of fixtures and fittings, which I thought was unjust. And I wrote letters, and the rent was too high. Oh, there was one place we did go to, and I thought we were going to have a chance. They said six pounds, and the next thing we heard, someone had offered a mate. So that put the cap on that. And other letters we got, ten pounds a week. Because Reg couldn't afford it, not on his wages, it meant that all the week we'd be living on next to nothing. In Birmingham, 39,000 families on the waiting list. Leeds, 13,500. Liverpool, 19,000. Manchester, nearly 15,000. It wasn't long before I realised something. We'd been lucky to get the old place. There didn't seem to be anything for us anymore. In Liverpool, one household in nine is on the waiting list. In Manchester, it's one in 14. In Birmingham, there are 4,000 overcrowded houses, 12 people to a house. Is that yours? Well, yes, it's just us and my husband. Sorry, though. No children accepted. Well, they had a couple of elephants. They might have said, fair enough, you can leave them outside in the yard. But children? They'd say, sorry, we can't have nothing like that. It was as if they thought it was a crime to have children. A million families are without homes of their own. You may have a teenage brother and sister who have to share the same bed. Or maybe a crippled person living on the top floor who just can never go out. Or perhaps they're sharing with relatives. Or maybe even like yourselves, they're uh, at an order of eviction. Now, to house these 8,000 units, we have 500 new dwellings every year. Purple's needs are assessed on points. One point for health risk, one point for every year they lived in a borough, and one point if they haven't got a bath. And really, you just haven't got enough points to qualify. Mm. But in view of the gravity of the situation, I will investigate and see whether it isn't possible to sort of jump you up the queue a bit. Oh, thank you. And also in view of the situation, I'll try and get you a place on the new Smithsonian estate, which is just near completion. We had a little girl next. We called her Miley. No, no, oh, it was Reggie's yeah. choice, not mine. Sure. She weighed eight pound five at birth. Quite a little heavy weight. One day we had a visit from the man from the council. Mr. Warren. Yeah. No, good morning. I'm uh, from the public health department. Oh yeah. I understand that you're living in one room because the room upstairs is too damp for the kiddies to sleep in. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we'll have to move you out. We were going to be evicted anyway. Are you? But when's that then? Next Tuesday. Well, that saves me a bit of trouble. And in any case, it saves me from having to do something that I don't really believe in. Good day, dear. You're a faceless man. Well, why don't you do something about it instead of just doing things you don't believe in? Got like a madhouse. They pulled the washing down from the line. The lights pulled out from their sockets. We even had windows taken from their frames. Someone turned the water off and the wires for the electric got all pulled out. There is another side. Our side. I'm speaking, by the way, with authority. Responsible for the property in question. Now I know it's quite common for the police to be brought in for an eviction. There's nothing unusual about that, but it does get people's backs up. It's bad publicity for the company that owns the place, particularly when it is a reputable body of churchmen who, purely through the application of good business methods, have landed themselves in the unfortunate position of seeming to do an injustice. <laughs> Maybe careful with that chair. 
They're going to get this road done up, they told me, in a couple of months, and it gets very bad in the winter. It's not very nice, is it, Reg? What are all these cars doing here? Well, it's a sort of a uh, dump, you know, the council are trying to do something about that as well. I wouldn't go back to a house. I never look at housing adverts now. I never look in, in house agents' windows. We tried councils, we tried welfare, we even tried to get tied cottages. Everything just fell through. Caravan was the last resort. I hate it. Uh, up that way. Well, which one that is way, it? Over there. That way. Which one? That one, there. That's it. Well, we're here then. We used to deal with just good a big fairs and buy horses and sell horses. That was mostly the living. So I love to go back on the roads. If we pull inside of the road, same as we used to years ago, the police come along and summons you and you go to court and we don't know where to go to. Right. Yeah, love. What about love? <coughs> now put that down, Sean. Well, what do you think of it, Anka? Could be worse. Oh, come on, love, it's not that bad. Is there any light? Yeah, I'll show you in a minute. Like the wood? Yeah, it's a bit dirty. Sit on it. I'll show you. That's it. Now, uh, it's quite easy to operate, Cap. It's not uh, difficult when I'm out the place. You know, you'll be able to do it yourself. I'll just uh, show you how it works. Now, need a box of matches. Uh, now, stick the match through there. And that's it. Uh, it's gone out, Reg. Oh. Uh, it wasn't too bad, really. The wind was getting up outside in the marsh. It made it feel quite snug inside. It felt funny to be in a caravan. I'd only been in one once before, and that was on summer holiday. It was a relief, though, really. I think it was because of the tension we'd been living under the past few weeks. And you've got a light, you see? And it's very efficient. It does a whole room, and it's warm as well. Like it? Yeah, she's tired. Night night. Yeah, we got some bacon. We better add that before it goes off and all. Come on now. Yeah, I'll have to go to sleep now. Good night. Good night. I don't know how we're going to fit another bed in here, Reg. Don't worry, Cap. I'll show you everything. Here we are. Let's see. Oh, it's very clever, isn't it? It's all right. It's all right. It's quite comfy too. Yeah. You sure we're safe here, Reg? I mean, they won't come and get us, will they? They won't move us on. What, from here? No, yeah. don't worry about it. I mean, they won't come and look for us here, not amongst all this lot. I mean, we may have dropped a peg, Kath, but I think we'll be a lot contenter. Yeah. Later, the wind got stronger. It began to rock the place around quite a lot. <laughs> I like a van. You get all the air around you in a van. You know, I'm 86. You're not. You're 86. 86. And I don't think a house would suit me. No. You know, in a house, you can't breathe. And I like air. I like fresh air. You know, it makes... It's beautiful, fresh air. There's, there's no roadway at all. It's just a road of mud. There's um, scrap heaps all the way up the lane, which we get fires nearly every day of the week burning. The caravans are very close together. We have to walk, what I say, a couple of hundred yards to empty a chemical toilet. In a house. It's all four walls, and we seem to close in, just like a bird penned up in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> to get the fuel to come down to us, well, it's... It, they just won't come. If the, it, with that state of that road and the mud and yeah. the bumps and that, there's too much... Another say, thing I can't understand, you know, these it's the drivers that stop this. It's yeah. the drivers that say, well, we're not coming down there. And yet they're the same sort of people as we are. People will look at me and say, oh, him, he's just a dirty old gypsy. Well, we're not dirty, we're clean. And we keep ourselves clean. I'll tell you why. Because we wash ourselves. Uh, and we don't need any of them flush baths either. Our way is this. Get a bucket of water. And we wash ourselves down, down to the waist. Uh, 
Then when that part's done, roll your shirt down, take off your trousers, <laughs> and you wash yourself down and up, up and down, up to the bottom. But in the open air? Yeah, in the open, certainly, of course. I'll tell you something else. You'll never find no fleas, lice, nor louse, because we know how to thwart them, with the devil's dung. What's that, then? Well, devil's dung, uh, you get up in the chemist. It uh, does have a, a bit of a stink, Mark, you. I grant you that. You can always tell a traveller, or you can always tell him by the way he walks and the way he acts. It sounds like I tell a policeman. I could really smell a policeman. We feel free because we can look at the open fields from our window. We have our own front door. We don't have um, people living all on top of us and yet we can live in a decent, civilised manner. Next door there's a load of rats. Well, at night you can hear them under our caravan all squeak, you know. That's all puppy noisy. I mean, if you want to in a caravan, you've gone as low as you can go. This, you can't go no lower than that. Unless, unless it's on the street or in the halfway houses. When Mr Jones came out the forces, he tried hard to find, trying to find places, mm. but the money he got was no good. Mm. As the kids came along, it got worse. He went down the mines, he went as a driver on the buses, mm. but each time the rent we were asked was far too much, too much for his wages. He tried That's to get jobs one. in the forestry, but each time we were turned down. Can't get anything no. really regular, you know, no. keeps dying. Yeah. He did the forestry when he was a prisoner of war. Reg got a job picking black currants. And when the job with the black currants was over, he got more work at the airport on the new runway. And then picking gooseberries and loganberries. And the kids liked life here too. They were for always finding things that fascinated them among the trees. I got to like it here as well. I don't know why. I mean, I know it was squalid, but it was easy going. Only sometimes the filth got on the nerves. I felt as if we'd sunk somehow out of the race. Things didn't seem to matter down here no more. There was no one to move us on. Reg and me reckoned we might stay here for a while. Well, it was a life. We were happy. What we are pressing for is the fencing off of the common land so that the gypsies and layabouts can no longer get on it. Now, it is the traditional camping place of the gypsies, of course. No one is denying that. But these are not real gypsies. They're just scroungers, layabouts. Bloody vagabonds. Mm -hmm. These are the words that spring to one's mind when contemplating these people. And, of course, with the new housing development, of which we are all part, the character of the area must be expected to change. We can accept no hindrance from those who willfully try to keep us in the past. Yeah. There is no longer room for slums on wheels. Many of these people are not, in fact, gypsies. They are here because, in fact, they can't find anywhere else to live. Yeah. Where would the sympathies of the association lie in the event of violence? I'm afraid our sympathies will be very much with ourselves. <laughs> The council has wasted enough time on these gypsies. They give nothing towards the councils. Right, mate, I'll get you! Why should we support them? Young, respectable couples in the borough can't get housing loans. Who would we rather have the money? Cherries, apples, oh, yeah. cream yes. That's right. Hops. Yeah. Get it. Bert and I helped to make that, didn't we? Yeah. Do you want another bite, Mr. Oh, I'll get it. No, I'll get them. Potato picking. Ah, fight, that's how I met the missus. No. Yeah, I'd been out potato picking, had a few yeah. points, you know. Yeah. And I had to go into this ditch. And there she was, the future Mrs. Abercander. Oh, she asleep, was she? No, she had a few points too. If you've got it off someone who knows okay, yeah, you know can give his name. <laughs> Why were you living there in the first place? Well, we was evicted from the council house in Stoke. Where were you on the night of the fire? We went out to buy some dogs for the kids. And on the way back, we stopped for a quick one. Did you and your wife have to be out together? Well, Mrs Jones can't drive, and anyway, I wanted her advice about the dogs. I mean, there are times when a husband and wife have to go out together, and this was one of them. And I would say, sir, that this was murder. It's the kids from the new estate. And the adults, oh, they just seem to encourage him. Now, you are the health inspector for this region. You yourself have made orders for the demolition of houses a thousand times better than these caravans. The local authority do have full I sympathy for these people. Maybe Pauline Jones, were you asleep in the caravan on the night of April the 25th? Yes. We was all six in the bed. I woke up because the place was full of smoke. So I grabbed little Gary in my arms and got out. I 
see. And uh, do you remember what happened then? Well, all the others got burnt up. <laughs> And they get the van and tie it over the boundary into the next district. Do you know what they do? They leave it on the side of the road, and then the police in that district come and nick you for being on the side of the road. Uh, it's all on account of saying about you can't cause obstructions on the public highway. He was working at the airport, but some nights when he got back, he couldn't find us, and he'd be worried about us. So he got behind and he's working. We can't go on like this, Kath. We're going to have to sell the caravan. I mean, there must be some way for it. Fancy you paying out money before you've even seen the place. Well, I didn't know, Kathleen. He said we could have the first floor front up here. Yeah, we used to have people living here, but now we can't allow it. The fact is, people tend to deteriorate when they're living in a boat. Yeah, we used to have them, but they turned the place into a slum. If people want to come here with their pleasure boats and take them out occasionally, it's all right by us. But living in them the old time, well, in my opinion, it's not helping anybody. We had to ask them to go. Yeah, but what if they're homeless? You both say they've got nowhere else to go, then. Even so, it's not helping them. In my opinion, we, we had to get rid of them. I mean, it's not helping them to help themselves, is it? I don't know, you people let yourselves get so run down. No wonder they won't have you. Well, we get run down because we haven't got no house. We've got a welfare state now. You can't come for any real harm. Are you in Abington of this borough? Are you on the housing list? Yeah. We're about on the list, are you? Surely you must be pretty high. Yeah, well, they say they're going to get us a place on the Smithson Estate when it's finished. Come on, one side, play with the rope properly. Oh, oh. 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 It's just leaking everywhere. You got enough wood? Please, no. I'm just going to light this up a fire and make her something to eat now. Mm, really? She's starving, wasn't it, I suppose? Hasn't had any food all morning. They're a lot like us here, then. Oh, it's quite a few of us, Can't you come round and give me a hand? All right, all right, love. I've got another one here. Yeah. Hold it nice and tight. I'll put this one in here. Oh, bloody ridiculous. You all right? <sighs> Sean's not very well either. I don't know what you think, Reg, but I think we've had it. Sit down. I mean, they turned us out the caravan, didn't they? And they turned us out the derelict house. Well, they're going to find us here. I know they will. I think we'll have to give up soon. To take the kiddies away, like that man said. Yeah, well, don't worry, love. I've got five pound, haven't I? Nice, this. You know what you're going to do tomorrow, then, Kath? Hmm. Pretty about that place, that Mason Ant. Yeah, but you do know what you're going to do now, don't you? Do you say you have an aunt living in Northumberland? Yes, I did have. But you don't know her address? No, I haven't seen her since I was seven. She might be dead as far as I know. Mrs Ward, have you any friends or other relatives who might help with accommodation? Look, if I had, I wouldn't be here, would I? Mrs Ward, I have to draw your attention to a fact which is not very pleasant. But in our emergency accommodation, well, it's not very nice. Some of the people are a little, a little rough. Now, are you sure you want to go in? Look, I don't want to be cheeky, but we've already been here for six hours. If I had any choice, do you think I'd have stayed? All right, sit down. Mr. Ward, please. Have you got a bit of chocolate? Keep it quiet, please, Kath. Oh. Oh, Mr. Ward, I'd just like to take one or two facts with you, please. You and your wife lived at your mother's house up to what date exactly? January 62. And at what address would that be? 97 Maysol Buildings, Maysol Street. Really? Not Mayberry? No, Maysol. No, Mr Ward. Your wife's mother. What is your wife's mother's address? Do you have any sisters? No. Oh, I thought you said Mr Ward. Oh, yeah, well, there's, there's my teenage sister, but she doesn't count. She hasn't got a house. She just caught in, too. Grandmother or grandfather? Yeah, I've got a grandfather, but he's in a home. Now, Mr. Ward, how many rooms does your mother occupy that is at Main Soul Road? There's, a, there's one bedroom and there's a living room. 
there's three adults living there already, so... The accommodation we have available is for wives only. We can't accommodate husbands, I'm afraid. Yeah, but why can't you accommodate the husbands, then? Well, we used to house husbands at one time, but we had to discontinue the practice. We used to tear up the sheets. We have no objection to your coming to see your wife of a weekday evening, provided you are gone by eight. The front entrance must not be used by you homeless. Now, there's a very good reason for that. It upsets the old people we accommodate here, and, of course, this accommodation really was meant for them. No alcohol in the building. About this, we are fairly strict. And inmates are expected to take a regular bath and get as much fresh air as possible. Rent, we charge five shillings a night for each adult and three bob for a child, payable in advance. Now, there are other rules, but you'll find it easy to pick them up as you go along. Any questions? Well, I don't think very much of it. Mr Ward, in many places in England, the families are not kept together. They're broken up as soon as they become homeless and the children are put in care, etc. Now, if we rehoused homeless families, people would say it was an easy way to jump the queue, wouldn't they? So we can't do it for obvious reasons. And it must be strictly understood that this accommodation is only temporary. After three months, make no mistake about it, we turn you out. So keep searching. Sit down. Don't eat it, then I'll eat it. Give it to me. Mrs. Ward, you'll be in room E72. E72, don't forget it. Hey, come on, out. Well, I've just taken her up to her room, see? Oh, we've only just come. Oh, I see. You're newcomers, are you? Well, no men beyond the lodge. I'm afraid you'll have to get out and say goodbye to your wife now. Hey, not you, girl. Oh, look, look, she, she's just arrived. Let me just take her up, please. If you could stay, I'd be all right. No, no, no. I'm sorry I don't make the rules. He'll have to go. She's got a lot to get through yet. Now, listen, lady, don't be saucy with Reg, me, please. Don't shut up. Many social workers feel that all homeless families are problem families. They may not be when they arrive in our hostels, but they usually are when they leave. It was considered that if a man couldn't provide a home for his wife and children, he wasn't much good. But that is certainly not true today. The great majority of the homeless families we deal with are decent citizens, and all they want is a home of their own. Try and keep the children clean. Because there's disease here. Well, why do they send us here if there's disease here? There's disease in all these places. We try to keep it down by swabbing them as they come in. So what you have to do, Sean, is take your panties down, and then they're going to put something up your body. Sean always was the worst at taking his pants down. He never liked anyone to see him without them. There exists in local authorities a kind of punitive attitude, which means that the whole problem of homeless families is the Cinderella of the Cinderellas. So I came out of the welfare place and I said goodbye to the missus, not knowing when I should see her again. Some men don't seem to bother whether they're living with their wife and all that, but I mean, I've always been one. We've been happy together. We've been married 18 years. <laughs> when you get like that, I mean, it upsets you, it breaks your heart. Bus drivers, lorry drivers, coalmen, GPO sorters, general labourers, scaffolders, all sorts of groups of workers have become homeless. such time as we either build houses in the areas where there is work or redistribute the work to those areas where there are empty houses, we're bound to get homeless families. In view of this, it often seems amazing to us in this department there are tens of thousands of homeless families instead of just thousands.
please do come, Rich. We have. Come on. in Margate and it was needed by the works department for a road widening scheme. So we got an eviction order and they said they couldn't rehouse us because they wasn't the welfare authority and they didn't have any houses. Never do that again, do you? Go and get another cup. Why? What's the matter with it? Look, keep away from the crack mugs. There's sickness in them. My first thought is I feel I'm a refugee. I've lived here all my life. Now I feel I'm like a refugee. Send us back to where? To where you're from. But, but not before you've taken all our houses away. You asked the one, then he will explain. Oh, God, you lot coming here with all your I'm not kids. going back. That's why we have to come to places like I'm this. Here you take up all our houses. houses. I'm not going back. A lot of you, too many it doesn't of you matter, it doesn't matter. I was in the council house, so it was. And then my husband, he buggered off. And they got a scheme there that if you're an abandoned woman, they turn you out. And so then I came here. They say it's to stop men leaving their wives. But it didn't work in my case, did it? It's largely nonsense to say that coloured people are responsible for our housing crisis. But the Milner Holland report showed that if the immigrants didn't come, either their places would be taken by migrants from other parts of the country, or a large number of essential jobs would remain unfilled. Our second point is that more people leave Britain each year than come into it. So there you are. Come, oh, Corey, back to Mummy. Go on, little boy, quick. Scrubbing, scrubbing, that's all. It is all day here. We have to scrub the place out twice a day. You'll see. The children's the ones that feel it most. They miss their toys, the little things they've had since they were tiny kiddies. Too far to take them back to their old school, even if we could afford the fares. And I mean, what are we expected to do? Put them in a new class here without any preparation? How'd you get that in here? Well, as well as me, would have been Come in here long give us enough. Cup. Yeah, so it's. My little drop. Yeah, now steady on. I don't want to get drunk. They come in at night to yeah, see no. that your husband is gone, and they come again at one or two in the morning. There's no place for family life. Yeah. That's why they have quarrels. The women, they get so frustrated. We used to have money once, didn't we? And I had a good job. And, well, then I had my accident and I lost the job, but well, we had that house, didn't we? And then, of course, we got evicted. Uh, but I'm, there was a caravan. And when we, well, I got ten, we got ten pounds for that. And I, I gave it to that bloke in the pub, you know, for that number 13, that house. But, you know, Every time, we just seem to sort of lose on the deal. I just don't seem to understand it. And here we are, you know, we're right at the bottom. Just, I just don't understand. And as time goes on, we just seem to sort of get lower, don't we? We're down now, but we'll be up again, Rich. Oh, yeah, we'll get up again. I mean, there's no question about that. No. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but, but now I'm on my own. I just don't seem to tick over. I mean, I got, I got married, you know, and um, with my wife and, and the children. I got to sort of need you, you know, and the kids. And we just sit, everything seemed to be okay. We could tick over and everything was fine. But it's very funny, but now I'm on my own again. It's all gone wrong. I just don't seem to be able to tick. Mrs. Ward, I've come to ask you a favour. Oh, yeah? Well, it's about Sean. I've come to a decision. I've decided I can't bear to see him in that place anymore. I mean, he's pining. I can see it. So what I was wondering, if it's all right with you, I'd like to leave him for a few days. Leave him with me? What do you mean? 
You can't walk out on your children just like that. Leave Sean with me. You must be out of your bleeding mind. You don't understand. I don't want to leave him. I mean, he really gets me. <laughs> but I can't stand to see him taking it so badly. I can't stand it. Bye-bye, darling. Be a good boy. Bye. using my bloody basin, haven't I? Oh, will you? Shut up. My kids have got a wash in there. You don't care. Your blink kids always walking around with their behinds hanging out. Oh, sit down, Red. You look uneasy. Well, sit down, then. All right, I'm sorry. I am uneasy, that's all. What about me? I have to live in this place. Reg, I don't like to ask you this. But Stevie needs some new shoes. Well, Kath, I'm only getting 11 pound a week, and I'm giving you six of it, aren't I? And I mean, there's a 15 bob for national insurance, and there's a pound a week for that furniture we've got in store. Well, that leaves you three pound five. Yeah, well, it's two pound ten for my lodgings, isn't it? Come on, Steve. Come play with the kid. Come on. It's two pound ten for my lodgings, and I got ten bob a week on travelling. That leaves me five bob a week for clothes and food. I mean, I don't like to clothe myself on five bob a week, eh? Well, what meals do you get at your lodgings? Well, I only get my breakfast, don't I? Well, how do you manage then? I don't. I was going to ask you if you couldn't do on a bit less. No, oh, Reg, that's not possible. You know we can't. Well, how much rent are you paying here then? Well, it's five bob a day for a grown up, three bob a day for a child, and that's three pounds a week without sugar. Well, what are you doing with the rest of it then? Oh, Reg, don't be like that. We have to get out of this place. We spend it on food. You get meals here, don't you? Yes, but this is easier. I mean, I can't let them eat here. One day was enough. Well, you're going to have to, aren't you? Why? Well, they're going to starve otherwise. I bumped into this fellow who said he knew of a bloke who could help us. So I went down to see this bloke, and he was filling in all these forms and things. And he says to me, uh, where are you living? So I told him this address of this, this new lodgings I've moved to. And he said, well, he said, I'm very sorry. He said, but I'm afraid I can only help people that are resident in this borough. I failed you, Cathy. You've been here three months. As you know, this is the maximum period we allow homeless families to remain in our temporary accommodation. I understand all that. This is only temporary, you know. We do, in fact, have the power to evict you. We can quite easily say, that's enough of that, so much for her. As they still do in many towns in Britain. We could take your children into care and turn you out just like that. Please don't do that. But we're not going to. We're going to give you one more chance. But I must emphasize, this is your last chance. You must make your own arrangements. Now, we've arranged for you to go to what we call our part three accommodation. Now, this, like the place here, is one of our accommodations where husbands are not admitted. But you're not going to like it. The amenities are nothing like as good as in this place, but there you are, it's the best we can do. But don't you think the thing is, sir, I mean, couldn't you find me a place where I could be with my husband? Some families here have really been trying to get back on their feet. Well, who are they? And how? I'm not met any. I mean, it's not possible. They can smell you from this place. They can smell you a mile off. Oh, don't talk like that, Mrs Ward. I'm sorry, but something's happening to me. I don't know how to explain it. But you see, all this is having a bad influence on my family life. Somebody told me that you've got these places they call Halfway House. And I thought if I could get into one of these places, Reg might come back to me. You see, he's drifting away from me. And the children, they need him. And the other thing is, that in a month's time, we've got a place to go to. You've got a place in a month's time? Yes, on the new Smithson estate. They're giving us a new flat there. We're told that you lost your place on the list long ago, owing to moving. 500 families have moved in already. But we was meant to be one of those families. Runts! I saw you laughing. Why, 
wipe that smile off your face. Haven't you got a rummy one of your houses? Why haven't you got flats out empty half the night? You don't care. You only pretend to care. Oh, I'm sorry. All I didn't right. think to all say right. that. All right, all right, Mrs. Ward. <laughs> That would be all. Oh. Well, what's your opinion, Warden? Well, of course, he's not an easy person by a long chalk. She keeps the children tidy, but uh, as you can see, she's not cooperative. But in my opinion, the trouble rests with the other half. But don't you think we could fit her in somewhere where she could be with her husband? No, there's nowhere at all. We're full up as it is. We've reached a state that if we had two other families come in tonight, we'd have to evict to make room for them. Six years I've put up with this sort of thing. Six years I've been here. When I come here, they said, who told you to come here? I said, no one told me, did they? I grew up here. My old man was in the army for six years. He was a regular. Well, that don't seem to count. Don't cry, love. What's the matter? Oh. I should leave her alone. Well, what's the matter with her? Why is she crying? She got the letter. What letter? The letter that you think she should. Should they come and talk her kids away now? Well, I went in front of the committee and they said, why not put your two eldest in institutions? Then we can rehouse you, they said. Here, do you mind if I give you a tip, dear? Don't go taking a bath, cos there's tramps what's getting it. Yeah, and the toilets get blocked. And there are cockroaches behind the plumbing. They come out at night and they're about an inch long. And this little girl and little boy... Yes. They had a lovely garden as well in their house by the seaside. I have a garden. I was bombed out in Plymouth. Then it was two years in a mental home. I'd like to play in a garden. I'm not to blame for that, am I? Somehow I didn't feel I could do that. I couldn't say goodbye to the kiddies. It's not, you know, you find you can't carry on without them. Last June it was I lost him. The disease it was. He was only ten weeks old. Poor little soul. They say go out and get looking for houses. But we know it's nonsense going out looking for houses. They call us the Cubies because we live in cubicles. Everybody around here thinks we're either unmarried mothers or girls from Borstal doing corrective training. But that's not so. My children were ill and my husband hadn't seen them. So he asked, could he come up and see them? They said no. So he tried to force his way in. They soon called the police and shut him out. And the police laughed at him. But even if we did find houses and there'd be other people here, because there's not enough houses. I think it's silly when a girl gets married thinking a bloke's going to stay faithful to her. But I still maintain I'm better off with him, being married to him, than being without him. Yeah. If you love a person, what's the point in leaving him? Do you know, we have to be back home by 8 and we have to be in bed by 10. He's got a fancy girl now. You see, men don't have it like women. He's got his freedom, ain't he? What do you do, Dad and Kath? What do you think I'd do? Nothing to do. Just sit about all day. Feel like running away. What about the kids, then? They're restless. Made so many changes, they don't know what's going to happen next. It's not good. If you go out at night, you've got to be back by 9 o'clock. How are you getting on with the food? There's potatoes. Yeah. Kids woke me up last night. They were crying. They were hungry. I wish you could come more often, Reg. Can't afford to, Cathy. Do you know, I really long for the nights here sometimes. Yeah, I'll bet you do. But not like we used to. Reg, get all this happened. It was a happy marriage, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, if it weren't for the kids, we wouldn't be here. So I'm glad we had them now. I mean, you can't wish your kids away, can you? Oh, no. But I 
don't know. I wish we could start all over again. I choose the same. Oh, I choose you, Reg. But now, I don't know. I just feel I want to look away. I'm practicing very hard, and with a little bit of recognition, I should be all right and some money, I hope. I know my age is against me, but I'm hoping to win. Give us a song, then. Come on. All Show right, your It went through my mind to chuck the whole thing up, turn my back on the kids and go off. You see, I felt I'd failed them. Well, I knew they weren't fit to be in a place like that. I thought how I used to be before we were married, without anyone depending on me. And I had boyfriends, and money in my pockets, and some good times. Look, why don't you go, Reg? I mean, you need a job, love. I've heard there's jobs up in Liverpool, too. And then when you've got a job, you can find a place. That's what I thought, Kath. They say it's easier up there. You know, I mean, I'm bound to be able to get a place up there, aren't I? Yeah. And then when the Smiths and the State's finished, I will have no more worries, then. Yeah. I'll go up there, and if I can't fix up the place, well, I should be back by the time the other place is finished. It was all so... Oh, sort of strange, really. Because oh, sure kids do oh, seem... Like well, they do seem to sort of need their dad. Well, they like to look forward to being with their dad, as well as their mum. To have a bit of a laugh with him. That baby was in tip-top medical condition. Yeah, if it was in tip-top medical condition, how, to, how come it's dead now? Yeah. Well, you tell me. The yeah. mother must have been to blame, dear. She couldn't have looked after I it did. properly. She's I a marvellous mother, I don't now you listen, say I'm that about her. Now listen, I'm only stating the truth. <laughs> the way some of you women keep your children. What do you mean? How yeah. much chance have we got in this dump? Just a minute, just a minute. What about hygiene? Yeah. What about bathing? Yeah. Hey, how often do you change your baby's nappy? You she tell me. Three, three times, times a day. day. Three times you a day? You Get out. You, you bloody cow. Come here, my dear. You don't care. Look at you. Come here. Come here. us. You'll be very sorry We're about this, my clean, dear. We're we are. Clean, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Clean, we yeah. keep our kids yeah. clean. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Look at it. No, 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 no. nice carrying on. Look, no, no, no. nice carrying on, making the babies cry. You're a That's cow. Who you're, you're a cow, you are. She couldn't care about us, could she? Yeah. Look at this bloody dump we're in. Yes, yes, yeah. it's a dump, and it's yes, you know, these are kids. Yes. My yes, fault. Yes, it's your bloody fault. You were the one that bought it back. Where's my cat? Where's my cat? Where's my cat? I don't know where your silly old cat is. Go on, get out. Go on, get out. I shall be reporting you, Yeah, dear. you do that. You, you do, do it. Oh, it. Bugger off. I wonder who said this. You see, it's about this place. I wonder who told those lies. It wasn't me. Listen, young lady, I'm not as stupid as I may look. A bit of blonde, wasn't it, who talked to the reporter? A blonde like you? Well, I don't know who it was. About other reports about you too, I think. About Mrs. Selby. Well, I was just telling her about the poor little baby that died, that's all. Mrs. Ward, I see here that your husband hasn't been paying the fees. Paying the fees? Of course he is. We'd know if he was or wasn't. Didn't he tell you he hasn't been paying? Well, I haven't seen him. He's been away on business. You haven't seen him? Not for a while. Look, my girl, what is going on here? Are you married or aren't you? Oh, shut up, you! Shut up! It Shall must be left? clearly understood that the temporary accommodation will no longer be available after that date. What does it mean? Shouldn't worry. worry about it. Doesn't mean what it no. says, maybe. These people are uh, casualties of the welfare state, perhaps the worst casualties of all. They're pushed around like so much human litter, and nobody will help them. Originally, homelessness was regarded as a passing post war phase, but the problem now appears to be with us for the foreseeable future. Oh, excuse me, I called about a room. How many of you? Well, there's just me and the two kiddies. Sorry, I only... I don't take children. Don't be a fathead when your time comes. Don't be like Mrs. Grocott. Let, let's take them away without making any fuss, huh? What right have you got to take my kids from me? Well, you can't find a place for them, can you? Now, look, you've had your chance. We're not interested in you now. 
It's the kids we're worried about. We can't have them sleeping out. From the time they leave here, they'll be in need of care and protection. Come on, Stevie, help Mommy pack. But you have it. That's a good boy. Yeah. You're coming out with me in a minute. We had a bite to eat from the cafeteria. Of course, the kiddies didn't know what was going to happen. But I knew they'd catch up with us wherever we tried to bed down for the night. Kathy Come Home is available to buy from BBC Store and other suppliers. On Tuesday night, Sarah Montague hears harrowing stories from three homeless people after Kathy on Radio 4 Tuesday at 8. Next on BBC Four, to an Indian Ocean island where things are just different. Nature's Wonderland's Islands of Evolution. <laughs> If you complained about me being black, that's who I am, a black woman caring for you. Black Nurses, the women who changed the NHS. Thursday the 24th of November on BBC Four. The stage is set. Experience, Simple Minds, unique in concert performance on Radio 2. Available now on the red button and on BBC iPlayer. Horizon investigates the materials that have built the modern world. But first, to an evolutionary one and a life less ordinary here on BBC Four.